The 2015 Infiniti QX60 is a three-row luxury crossover that puts families first. Based on the versatile Nissan Pathfinder, the QX60 was previously known as the JX in the 2013 model year until Infiniti decided to put a new renaming strategy on their whole vehicle lineup in the 2014 model year for the North American market. Now the JX was really praised for its ample passenger room, its classy interior design, as well as its smooth and quiet ride. So let's go ahead and check out this 2015 Infiniti QX60 and see if it could still compete in the large three row luxury crossover SUV segment. Now as far as styling goes on the vehicle, I quite like the styling a lot and I think it looks pretty aggressive and I think it fits well within the whole Infiniti SUV lineup. You have some pretty nice looking projector headlights and then a pretty aggressive looking and bold front end here. Now here goes the key fob for the vehicle. Typical Nissan Infiniti key fob. There's a smart key and you do have your remote engine start your lock, your unlock, to release your tailgate, and then your panic button. But overall, it's just any old Infiniti Nissan smart key here. Now new for the 2015 model year on the QX60 is that it gets new CVT programming designed to stimulate the shifting of a conventional automatic transmission. Now of course you do have smart key access on the driver's door and the front passenger door. This QX60 is also in this pretty nice looking white pearl exterior color. And you do have a full black leather interior. Power driver's seat with power recline and power lumbar too. Now stepping on into the vehicle here, like I said, it has a pretty classy interior design and I really do like the wood grain trim that does spice up things in this side of this cabin here. But the step in height is fairly low and our QX60 comes with these illuminated kick plates that look pretty good at night time. Now you do have push button ignition, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start of course. And what you're hearing is a 3.5 liter V6. Of course you have a full leather wrapped steering wheel. Now coming to your transmission, you have a CVT automatic manual shiftability. Putting the vehicle into reverse, displays your rear view camera and you do have an around view monitor on this QX60 here. You could change the different views. You have a side view right there and then your rear view camera and you also do have parking sensors too. Guidance lines and trajectory as well. Pretty neat. And you also have a front camera too. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the lights. And you have fog lights too. And the hazards. And let's go ahead and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. All windows are fully automatic in the QX60. Heated exterior mirrors. You also have these pretty distinctive looking 18 inch alloy wheels. High intensity discharge headlights with your halogen fog lights. Front parking sensors and like I said you do have a front camera. Now under the hood here like I said, you do have a 3.5 liter V6 producing 265 horses at 6400 RPM and 248 pound-feet of torque at 4400 RPM with the EPA estimates being 
a decent 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. And ours we have here is all wheel drive. And it does run on premium unleaded fuel. Now since the QX60 is a pretty large vehicle, its workday V6 can feel a little sluggish during passing maneuvers. In time, you'll likely get used to it, but depending on your priorities, the QX might not meet your performance expectations for a luxury branded vehicle. Now trims of the QX60 start at the base trim, which starts at $42,400, and then you can choose a hybrid model, which starts at $45,000. $400 and essentially there's many packages that you can choose on the QX60 as well. Now competitors of the QX60 you have the Buick Enclave, the BMW X5 as well as the Acura MDX which are vehicles in the three row large crossover luxury SUV segment. Now EPA estimates like I said are 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. Total vehicle price for this particular one is $53,000 $305. Comes with the premium plus package and then also the premium package and the theater package as well as roof rails, splash guards, the pearl paint, the rear bumper protector as well as the illuminated kick plates. Very stylish and sleek design here. LED tail lamps, rear window defroster, rear window wiper, rear parking sensors and an LED third brake light at the top here and rear reflectors too power windows, power door locks, power mirrors power folding exterior mirrors too Nice soft touch armrest, soft touch on the mid door panel and upper door panel too. And let's go ahead and rev it up. Now as far as build quality and materials go inside of the QX60 here, it's pretty good overall. You have nice soft touch materials on the upper door panel where you might rest your elbow and then nice soft to the touch on the mid door panel too. In the mo most important places it's soft to the touch. Up here it's also nicely padded and then everything fits well and is pretty well built inside of this vehicle here. There's not that many panel gaps. However, up here it's hard to the touch. What I wouldn't expect in a luxury SUV here. But it has an okay graining to it. But one complaint I do have about this interior is that there's not a whole lot of stitching going on. And a lot of SUVs nowadays, the new trend is that you have stitching on the dashboard and everything. But the QX60 keeps it pretty conservative here. But it's still a pretty classy interior design. Now even though it has a pretty classy interior design overall, it still looks a little too much like a Nissan inside of here. And you can really tell that by the main head unit and then the controls and down here as well and then even the gauges and the steering wheel. But Infiniti has a pretty hard time with some of their vehicles differentiating themselves from the main Nissan brand, but it's still a very luxurious interior. It just looks a little too much like a regular Nissan. Now coming down here, you have your cup holders, 12 volt power outlet, then your heated seats for the driver and the passenger, and then your different modes. You have an eco mode, a snow mode, and a sport mode. Coming down to your center console, nice soft to the touch and stitched. Then down there you will also find a USB port, a 12 volt power outlet, and your video jacks. Pretty large center console storage, you can maybe store a few things in there. 
Then coming up here you have your sunglass container, SOS Safety Connect, then your sunroof controls, sliding shade for your sunroof, then your interior illumination lighting, auto dimming rear view mirror with garage home link. Now coming to the steering wheel design, I'm not really a big fan of this steering wheel design. It just doesn't really pop out enough. It's kind of Spartan looking. But you do have your voice recognition, Bluetooth, steering wheel mounted audio controls, and then your cruise control buttons right there. And then this controls your main head unit, which I will get to in just a second. And then this little button right here controls your little information center, which I will get to. Coming right here, you also do have your power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Coming right here, you have your power tailgate, traction control off button, your adjustable headlights, and then your heated steering wheel, and then your power outlet if you want it off or on. Now coming to the main controls here, I love how simple and clean it looks, and I love how they went with traditional knobs and buttons instead of touch sensitive capacitive buttons here. We have your volume knob right here, your presets, XM satellite radio, AM, FM, your disc and auxiliary right there, then your CD player optical disk drive, and then your tune and scroll knob right there. Now coming to these controls right here, you have dual zone automatic climate control, your temperatures, different zones, then your fan speeds, your rear climate control buttons, and then it'll actually display up on the touch screen right here. And then you also do have a day and night mode for the touch screen. Coming right here, you have your front window defroster and your rear window defroster. Now coming to the main touch screen, I'm not really a big fan of the touch screen, mainly because it's getting pretty dated and also they share this same touch screen with many Nissan products. But the map quality is also pretty scrunchy by today's standards. But you do have live traffic and you can zoom in and out by just going like this. But I mean it gets the job done and you can enter in a destination by voice but that's pretty much the norm nowadays. There's nothing really to stand out-ish about this whole entire system here. There's no 3D rendering of buildings or anything of that nature here. But you do have your nearby places, store location, map view, then your map icons, and then store tracking. Then you have your digital clock right there, and then your compass. And then coming right here to camera, you can actually bring up the camera at any given time, which is pretty cool in my opinion. A lot of cars don't do that nowadays, and I think a lot of cars should do that. You have your front camera right here, and then your side view camera, of course. And then you have a day and night mode too, pretty neat. Now coming to the info button here, you can go on to infinity connection, you have your fuel economy, traffic info, weather info, where am I, and then your maintenance, and then if your map needs an update, and then you have your others right here. And it shows you your navigation version, GPS position, and then voice recognition. Then you have your infinity connection here. Then your fuel economy data gives you your average fuel economy. Pretty neat. Traffic info, nearby traffic info, info on route, and your weather info. Warnings and watches, history, current weather and forecasts. And then coming to status, shows you if what media source you're on and then what temperature of the climate you have on. And coming to settings, you can change many different settings like the volume and beeps, rear display, Bluetooth, audio, navigation. But overall, once you get used to the system, it's very easy to use, and I love how quick it is and responsiveness of the touchscreen is very great. 
And then your different media options do include Bluetooth streaming audio, AM, FM, XM satellite radio, your auxiliary input, and your USB port too. Now as far as visibility goes in the QX60, it's actually decent for a crossover with its sleek styling. Decent amount of side vi visibility here. And then also rearward visibility is not too shabby and it really does help that you have that around view monitor. So overall visibility is not too bad. Now coming to the main gauges here, I really do love the gauges in the QX60. I love how clear and easy to read it is and then the font on them. And then coming to your little information center right there, little LCD screen. Then you have vehicle settings, and then your average fuel economy, then your tire pressure monitoring, and if you have any warnings going on. Then it also gives you your exterior temperature readout on the top, and then your trip odometer as well. And you can change many different vehicle settings like the welcome light, the rain sensor, which this vehicle does have rain sensing windshield wipers. And then down there it shows you what gear you're in and then your trip odometer. And then your different driver selectable modes will actually display on that little screen right there. You have your eco mode and then your snow mode and then your standard mode and then your sport mode. Now as far as the seats go in the QX60, they're very couch-like and still having a reasonable amount of support here, but they're extremely comfortable. One of the most comfortable seats I've sat in in a luxury SUV. Now you certainly won't have any complaints about the QX60 once it's up to speed on the highway. With its very cushy ride, this Infiniti shrugs off rope imperfections and it's a very comfy, quiet, and luxurious vehicle. The trade-off, however, is that the QX60 is a grudging partner when you drive it through turns. It feels heavy, the steering is very light and imprecise, and the soft suspension tuning allows for a lot of body lean. Alright, and let's go ahead and shut it down. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle, including the rear passenger space as well as the cargo capacity. Like I said, you do have a power tailgate. And you also do have memory seat settings for two people. Now of course these rear seats do fold down in the QX60. You have your 12 volt power outlet back here. Very easy to fold them down. Then right there you have a little storage compartment. Cargo capacity is pretty good in the QX60. Of course, build quality and materials do follow through in the rear. Still nice and soft to the touch everywhere. Mid door panel, upper door panel, and the armrest. The second row seats also do recline and they do slide forward and aft. Now, the driving position is where my driving position would be. And I'm about 5'11", and I have so much room back here. It's pretty unbelievable. I'm actually very surprised. You have your rear air vents back here. Automatic climate control. 120 volt power outlet. And then a 12 volt power outlet. And then your rear video jacks are down there too. And then you also do have a rear seat DVD entertainment system that comes with the theater package. Then you also do have dual map pockets on each seat. So in total you have four map pockets, pretty surprising there as well. And then your cup holders with your rear center armrest. The seats themselves are also pretty comfortable back here too. Now if you want to fold the second row seats down, just pull this up and they come right down. Now if you want to hop into the third row, pull this up and then this comes right up and then slide it forward. Easy as that. Let's 
go ahead and hop into the third row. Now if you're definitely looking for a three row luxury crossover SUV that has a pretty good third row seat, the QX60 is pretty hard to beat unless if it's a Buick Enclave. Now you do have rear cup holders back here. The leg room is very great back here on the QX60 and I'm actually pretty comfortable and I can take a long road trip in this SUV back here in the third row and a lot of crossovers I cannot do that. Very comfortable. Alrighty. Powered passenger seat with power recline. Glove box compartment. Nice and damp and lightweight felt. Alrighty. So with its roomy seating and comfortable ride, the 2015 Infiniti QX60 is certainly a good choice for a family-oriented seven-passenger luxury crossover SUV. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.